Good afternoon, um, distinguished members of the press, ladies um, and gentlemen. The Monetary Policy Committee met on the 24th and 25th of July 2017 against the backdrop of a relatively improving global economy. However, protectionism in trade and immigration, fragilities in the financial markets, remain the key risks to global economic stability. On the domestic front, the economy is on a path of moderate recovery in a positive short to medium term outlook, premised largely on fiscal stimulus and a stable Naira exchange rate. Inflation expectations also appear sufficiently anchored with the current stance of monetary policy. In attendance were eight out of 12 members of the committee. Committee examined the global and domestic economic and financial environments in the first half of 2017 and the outlook for the rest of the year, the external developments. The momentum witnessed in the global economy during the first quarter of 2017 continued through the second quarter, driven by a generally accommodative monetary policy stance in most advanced economies, moderation in energy prices, and improved global demand. The emerging markets and developing economies are experiencing positive spillovers from somewhat improved commodity prices and developments in the advanced economies. The growth prospects for this group of countries in 2017 are expected to rise to about 4.6% from 4.3% in 2016. Complemented by the momentum in other blocks and a potential positive prospect for expansion in world trade, the International Monetary Fund, in its July edition of the World Economic Outlook, projected global output growth in 2017 at 3.5% from 3.1% in 2016. The Monetary Policy Committee, however, noted some headwinds confronting the optimistic outlook to global growth, arising mainly from receding market expectations of expansionary United States fiscal policy, weaker than expected growth in the UK due to difficult Brexit negotiations and geopolitical risks associated with the forthcoming German general elections. In addition, the committee noted the downward trend in global, global inflation after earlier indications of an uptick as the United States continues to build up inventories in shale oil while emerging economies such as Brazil, Russia, and South Africa witness strong economic headwinds leading to sharp downturn in outputs. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics showed that the contraction in the economy moderated to 0.52% during the first quarter of 2017 from 1.3% during the fourth quarter of 2016. The data further revealed that 15 economic activities recorded positive growth during the first quarter of 2017, strong signs of recovery, showing strong signs of recovery. The Purchasing Managers Index, the PMI, for manufacturing and non-manufacturing activities stood at 52.9 and 54.2 index points in May and June 2017, respectively, from 52.7 and 52.5 index points in, 20, in May 2017, indicating an expansion for the third consecutive month. Similarly, the composite index of economic activities rose from 55.85 to 59.50 index points between April and June 2017. The committee noted the continuous positive effects of improved foreign exchange management on the performance of 
manufacturing and other economic activities. Non-oil real gross domestic product grew by 0.72% during the first quarter of 2017, reflecting growth in the agricultural sector by 0.77% in the same period. Provisional data also showed that the external sector remained resilient during the first, second quarter of 2017, as the overall balance of payments position recorded a surplus of $0.65 billion, equivalent to 0.8% of GDP. The committee noted that the implementation of the 2017 budget and economic recovery and growth plan will further strengthen growth and stimulate employment. The committee noted that money supply M2 contracted by 7.33% in June 2017 annualized to a contraction of 14.66% in contrast to the provisional growth benchmark of 10.29% expansion for 2017. The development in M2 reflected a contraction of 7.45% in net foreign assets in June 2017. Similarly, M1 contracted by 7.98 and 10.70% in May and June 2017 respectively, consistent with the directive of the MPC that expansion in narrow money, narrow money should be controlled. On the other hand, net domestic credit grew modestly by 1.02% in June 2017, annualized at 2.04%, driven mainly by net credit to the government, which grew by 5.91%. Credit to, to the private sector, however, declined relative to end of December 2016 by 0.02%. The MPC noted the widened fiscal deficit of 2.51 trillion naira in the first half of 2017 and the growing level of government indebtedness and expressed concern about the likely crowding out effect on the private sector investments. The constrained growth in monetary aggregates provide evidence of weak financial intermediation in the banking system arising from the constraints imposed by the macroeconomy. Headline inflation year on year declined for the fifth consecutive month in June 2017 to 16.1% from 16.25% in May and 18.72% in January 2017. Core inflation moderated to 12.5% in June from 13% in May 2017, while the food index rose marginally to 19.91% in June from 19.27% in May 2017. This development was traced to intermittent attacks by headsmen on farming communities, rising incidents of terrorist activities in the Northeast and other seasonal farming effects. The committee was particularly concerned about the unabating pressure from food inflation, but remains hopeful that the situation will, damp will, will dampen in the third quarter as harvest begins to manifest. The committee also attributed the modern moderation in inflation to be partly due to the effects of the relative stability in the foreign exchange market stemming from improved management which promoted increased inflows. Against this backdrop, the committee reiterated its commitment to sustain and deepen flexibility in the foreign exchange market to further enhance foreign exchange flow in the economy. Committee, however, noted the protracted effect of high energy and transportation costs, as well as other infrastructural constraints on consumer price developments, and expressed hope that government will fast track its reform agenda to address this legacy 
issues. The committee noted that while responding to the current tight monetary policy stance, inflation still had a strong base effect, which is expected to wane by August 2017. Money market interest rates moved in tandem with the high level of liquidity in the banking system. The interbank call rate opened at 16.13% on May 25, 2017 and closed at 4.43% on June 29, 2017. However, the average interbank call rate during the period stood at 12.49%. The movement in the net liquidity position reflected the effects of open market operation, foreign exchange interventions, statutory allocation to state and local governments, and maturity of Central Bank of Nigeria bills. The committee noted the improvements in the equities segment of the capital market as the all share index rose by 33.33% from 25,216.34 on March 31, 2017 to 34,020.37 on July 21, 2017. Similarly, market capitalization rose by 32.84% from 8.83 trillion to 11.73 trillion during the same review period. Relative to the end of December 2016, capital market indices rose by 26.59 and 26.81% respectively, reflecting growing investor confidence due to improvements in foreign exchange management. The committee, however, noted the seeming bubble in the capital market and cautioned on the utilization of the inflows. Total foreign exchange inflows through the Central Bank of Nigeria increased by 35.41% in June 2017 compared with the previous month. Total outflows, on the other hand, decreased by 12.73% during the same period as a result of reduced CBN intervention in the interbank foreign exchange market, which also reduced the TSA dollar payment balances by 61.4% in the month under review. The positive net flows reflected in an improvement of gross external reserves to $30.3 billion at the end of June 30th, 2017 compared with $29.81 billion at the end of May 2017. The committee noted the emerging convergence between the Bureau de Change and Nigeria Autonomous Foreign Exchange NAFEX segment rate and the stability of the average Naira exchange rate at the interbank segment of the foreign exchange market during the review period outlooks and risks. Available macroeconomic data on key economic indicators point to a fragile economic recovery in the second quarter of, of the year. The committee, however, cautioned that this recovery remains very fragile and could relapse in a more protracted recession if strong and bold monetary and fiscal policies are not activated immediately to sustain the recovery. Thus, the expected fiscal stimulus and non-oil federal receipts, as well as improvements in economy-wide non-oil exports, especially agriculture, manufacturing services, and light industries, all expected to drive the growth impetus for the rest of the year must be pursued relentlessly. The committee expects that timely implementation of the 2017 budget, improved management of foreign exchange, as well as security gains across the country, especially in the Niger Delta and Northeastern Axis, should be firmly anchored to enhance confidence and sustainability of economic recovery. 
committee identified the downside risks through this outlook to include weak financial intermediation, poorly targeted fiscal stimulus, and absence of structural program implementation the considerations of the committee. Notwithstanding the improved outlook for growth, committee assessed the implications of the uncertainties arising from the continued normalization of monetary policy by the United States Fed and the implications of a strong dollar, the weak recovery of commodity prices, and the uncertainty of the US fiscal policy. Committee similarly evaluated other challenges confronting the domestic economy and the opportunities for achieving economic growth and price stability in 2017. Committee expressed satisfaction with the gradual but consistent decline of inflationary pressure in the domestic economy, noting its substantial base effects continuous improvements in the Naira exchange rate across all segments of the foreign exchange market, and considerable signs of improved investments inflows. Committee welcomed the move by the fiscal authorities to engage the services of asset tracing experts to investigate the tax payment status of 150 firms and individuals in an effort to close some of the loopholes in the tax collection towards improving government revenue. However, the committee expressed concern about the slow implementation of the 2017 budget and called on the relevant authorities to ensure timely implementation, especially of the capital portion, in order to realize the objectives of the economic recovery and growth plan. Committee believes that at this point, developments in the macroeconomy suggest two policy options for the committee to hold or to ease the stance of monetary policy. Against the backdrop of the outlook for the domestic and global economy, the enthusiasm around the base effect which reduced inflationary pressures and the continuous relative stability in the Naira exchange rate there is need to maintain cautious optimism given the potential ramification of a major deviation from the existing policy path. The committee is not unmindful of the high cost of capital and its implications on the still ailing economy, which arguably necessitates an accommodating monetary policy stance. The MPC also noted the liquidity surfeit in the banking system and the continuous weakness in financial intermediation, but agreed on the need to support growth without jeopardizing price stability or upsetting other recovery macroeconomic indicators, particularly the relative stability in the foreign exchange market. The MPC thinks that easing at this point would signal the committee's sensitivity to growth and employment concerns by encouraging the flow of credit to the real economy. It would also promote policy consistency and credibility of MPC decisions. Also, the committee observed that easing at this time would reduce the cost of debt service which is actually crowding out government expenditure. The risk to easing, however, would show in terms of upstaging the modest stability achieved in the foreign exchange market, the possible exit of foreign exchange port foreign portfolio investors, as well as a resurgence of inflation following the intensified implementation of the 2017 budget in the course of the year. Committee also reasoned that easing would further pull the real interest rate down into negative territory. The argument for holding is largely premised on the need to safeguard the stability achieved 
in the foreign exchange market and to allow time to pass for, for past policies to work through the economy. Specifically, MPC factored that the high banking system liquidity level, the need to continue to attract foreign investment inflow to support the foreign exchange market and economic activity, the expansive outlook for fiscal policy in the rest of the year, and the prospective elections related spending which could cause a jump in system liquidity and etc. The MPC expressed concern over the increasing fiscal deficit estimated at 2.51 trillion naira in the first half of 2017 and the crowding out effect of high government borrowing while urging fiscal restraint to check the growing if deficit the committee welcomed the proposal by government to issue sovereign back promissory notes of about 3.4 trillion naira for the settlement of accumulated local debt and contractor arrears committee however advised management of the bank to monitor the release process of the promissory notes to avoid an excessive injection of liquidity into the system, thereby offsetting the gains so far achieved in inflation and exchange rate stability. On the outlook for financial system stability, committee noted that in spite of the resilience of the banking sector, the prolonged weak macroeconomic environment has continued to impact negatively on the sector's stability. <clears throat> the NPC reiterated its call on the bank to sustain its intensive surveillance of the deposit money bank's activities for the purpose of promptly identifying and addressing vulnerabilities. The committee also called on the deposit money banks to support economic recovery and growth by extending reasonably priced credit to the private sector. Committee's decision. In consideration of the headwinds confronting the domestic economy and the uncertainties in the global environment, the committee decided by a vote of six to two to retain the NPR at 14% alongside all other policy parameters. Consequently, six members voted to retain the NPR and all other parameters at their current levels, while two members voted to ease the stance of monetary policy. In summary, the MPC decided to, one, retain NPR at 14%, two, retain the CRR at 22.5%, three, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%, and four, retain the asymmetric corridor at plus 200 and minus 500 business points around the monetary policy rate. I thank you for listening. Because um, we have seen that lending rates are going up, 
and also interest rates are also going up. Is this some sort of concern to the FX fund? Good afternoon, sir. My name is Hamisu. I manage for Daily Trust in So, with the relative stability of uh, an era at the foreign exchange markets and uh, the need to also stabilize prices, are we expecting maybe devaluation of NERA since we are expecting also a stability in the reserve very soon? They will also expect that whatever decision they take should be not should not be those decisions that will hurt other important stakeholders in that industry. Um, you all know that ATS Alert is one of the four biggest telecommunications company in Nigeria, with subscriber base of over 20 million, and of course we also know that the revenue base of the company is very um, very robust. ATS Alert employs over 4,000 people. And of course, if you, if you understand the likely impact of any adverse consequences on AT Salad on the life of these 4,000 people, and indirectly even more than 4,000 people, the fact that there are 20 million subscribers that uh, receive the services of AT Salad it is important that we should not just allow um, any creditor who feels advantaged to take a decision that hurts other important stakeholders and creditors in that operate within AT Salad. That was what the NCC and the CBN observed, that there, there was that the activities and the, the attempt by, by some creditors was going to lead to a dismemberment of that company. And we thought that we could not allow 20 million subscribers to be running Helter Skelter without services. And that we could not allow 4,000 or more staff of this company to just run in this array because something wrong had happened. That is the reason that NCC, supported by the CBN, decided to intervene to say, please, gentlemen, we understand all your interests in this company. Either you are a creditor or you are a service provider. Let's take things easy so we do not hurt the interest of others that also have, have in, in, what I call it interest in this company. So that's the reason NCC, supported by CBN, intervened. But I must, I must say that that intervention has been positive. We have, AT Salad has retained its subscriber base. Its 4,000 staff or so or plus have continued their work. And indeed, revenue, indeed for the month of June, which was, which was seen to be the most tumultuous for this company, had remained stable at at least 16 billion naira monthly. We, a lot of uh, people who, who were watching from the sidelines thought that 80 salaries revenue was going to drop drastically and that there was going to be flight to safety by the subscribers. This has not happened. This company, by its activity and operations, I would say remains strong. The resource revenue remains strong and we would like to maintain this. The intervention through the, um, through the institutionalization of an interim board headed by the regulators, I must, confer, I must say here that it's temporary, and our own plan is that this should not take more than maximum 90 to 180 days. The company advisors have been appointed to midwife a process for a, a, a major investor or major investor to intervene in the company and take it over. I am very gratified at the surge by potential investors who have written showing interest. So what would happen is that this interest will be eventually made open. The advisors will advertise for RFP. They will call for RFP 
everybody will go into the data room and conduct their due diligence and after that the best person that presents himself for the parade will win and will become so we are happy we are not we are not we are not moved at all by this second is the question on the rationale for holding interest rates i thought the communique had explained this substantially but i think it's important that we understand that as nigerians we also understand that there is a need for a low interest rate because we know that will lead to low interest rate will make it easy for for people who want to borrow money to borrow money at low rates we know easing will inject liquidity into the system we know it but we are saying inflation at 18.8 percent when we started even today inflation at 16.1 percent where we are right now as at june is still considered very high in the in the, in the light of of studies that have been conducted there are acceptable models for com for computing the inflation threshold and these models have computed inflation threshold for nigeria at a range of between 10 to 12 percent what that means is that when inflation rises Above, is above 12 percent no matter the action that you take to stimulate growth it will it will retard growth so the important thing is we needed to look at how do we reverse the trend in inflation and we are happy that we have we have done so from 18.8 down to 16.1 and we are hopeful that it will continue to trend downwards. And as this is achieved, just like you, we also believe that there is a need to ease and also bring interest rates down. But we are truly not there yet because of the reasons I've, all, I've stated, but also more importantly because we believe that easing now or reducing interest rates will pull the real interest rate further to a negative territory which is a disincentive to investment those are some of the fundamental issues a disincentive to investment will will hurt our stability that we've so far achieved in the foreign exchange market and there's a need for us to ensure that this does not happen that is the rationale and we would continue as much as possible to continue to provide these explanations. I assure everybody, we understand the pain, but the actions of um, the Monetary Policy Committee or decisions of the Monetary Policy will be reflected in whatever direction that we, that we think is good for Nigeria and for Nigerians. Banks are complaining about the, the liquidity mop up. I must say that I was once there. Yeah? That is their business is to complain because they are economic agents that are interested in making profit. We as regulators, looking at all the data that confronts us, certainly know that we also must be alive to our own responsibility to do our work. And doing our work means that we must do what we have done to continue to achieve the sliding trend in inflation and stabilize the foreign exchange market. That is what we are doing, and we will continue to do so. I repeat, until we get to a point where 12 people who sit for two days think that it is time for us to move in that direction. As far as we are concerned, these are all 12 Nigerians who come in day one, look at all the data, study the data, go back home, sleep, come back the following day, analyze, discuss. At the end of it, independently, everybody makes his choice as to the direction. And what we do here, by even this communique, is to read to you a summary of decisions, nothing more. We are just messengers to that 
Monetary Policy Committee. With relative stability in the FX market, any need to... I, I don't... Um, issues about depreciation and appreciation, I think we've left that now to the market. Market will decide. Gone are the days where central bank will be seen to be, to be uh, leaning on somebody as to whatever he thinks he think the direction of the market and the direction of rate will be. The central bank remains a player in that market. And from time to time, given our own sensibility, sensitivity regarding what, where we think the market will be, we will intervene. And that is why we are saying, that is why you have seen the level of intervention in the last five months or five or six months. And I also want to seize upon you to say that the intensity for that intervention would continue. I thank you very much. Where is the uh, well, thing has fallen off? The reading, the content of the community, mm -hmm. as well as expected, okay. we don't change the policy in any agenda to our panel discussion right now. So this is not overall your opportunity. Um, no surprise. Uh, Thank you.